Hello again, everyone. Kata Kosman, publisher of Madison's Lumber Reporter. Coming to you from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. We are a price guide newsletter tracking 500 individual North America construction framing softwood lumber and panel prices since 1952. I'm the third owner. And so today I'm going to talk about plywood and OSB. This is very confusing. The price changes with the plywood and OSB for most of this year haven't really correlated with the lumber prices and doesn't really seem to be moving along with what US housing is doing. And so I don't have quite as much of a definitive summary for the panel as I did have for the Dimension Lumber, if you saw my video that I just posted the other day. But I do have some updates. I'm going to do a short video on this right now and then another one mm, in a couple of weeks toward the middle of after the middle of August, because I think by then we'll be able to see a little bit more. We'll know a little bit more exactly what's going on there. And so where I was explaining with the lumber prices that just in the past couple of weeks, sort of in the middle of July toward uh, the end of July, those prices hit bottom and have started to come back up by a few dollars. That same thing happened with the plywood and OSB, but back in the spring. So in May and June, plywood and OSB prices were rising and they only stayed up there for a couple of weeks, three weeks, and they started to come back down and they still are seem quite soft and falling now uh, right at the beginning of August. So that says to me that the plywood and OSB sellers tried to run up that price higher than the market could bear. Because if the prices were increasing and stayed level at that price point for a while before dropping, then that would mean the supply and demand balance was in good shape. But because it didn't really last and went pretty much on a steady decline since then, and I will show you the graphs, don't worry. It means to me that possibly those panel producers maybe were a little bit ahead of the game and thought that they could raise the price and the customer would not accept that, okay? And so just real quick, the benchmark, uh, Canadian softwood plywood, uh, 9.5 millimeters or three eight inch out of Toronto, price right now is $580 Canadian per thousand square feet, uh, which is down 21% from one year ago at the same time last year when it was 730. And the benchmark OSB price uh, oriented strand board 7 16th inch out of Ontario uh, at the end of July was Canadian $435 per thousand square feet, which is down 38% from the same time one year ago. Okay. It's important to remember that especially plywood, but also OSB are used for other things besides home building. So that's why sometimes those plywood and OSB prices change in a different way than dimension lumber, which directly goes up and down with housing. A lot of those other uses, well, there is concrete forming and infrastructure, but often it is uh, storms, uh, boarding up windows in advance of storms and re-roofing after the storms. And so that's something that impacts those panel prices that does not have much of an impact on dimension lumber. Okay. Uh, so at this moment, that's what I can tell you. I'll show you the graphs right now. That's what I can tell you. But what I'm thinking is we need to get through August and start to approach Labor Day, especially after Labor Day, and really be able to peg where this plywood and OSB prices are, what is the new level that we can expect to see, uh, and what will the trend line be into the rest of this year. Great. And so for the Canadian softwood plywood out of Toronto, 9.5 millimeters or 3.8 inch, the price this week at the beginning of August is uh, $580 Canadian per thousand square feet, which is the same as last week and is down from one month ago when it was 585. 
In the same week last year, it was 730. And in the same week two years ago, it was 754. So you can see by this graph how that price is moderating into the range that we will be able to consider normal going forward, as opposed to all of that volatility that we saw at those insane price highs of uh, 2021 and 2022. And this is the benchmark OSB item oriented strand board out of Ontario 7 16 inch. You can see the price trend line is quite different from the plywood you were just looking at, which is what I mean about how these items are put to different uses than just single family home building. And so sometimes those price movement does not necessarily match either each other or dimension lumber. And also, if you look closely at that blue line for this year, this is what I'm explaining about how the price did increase quite steadily into the spring, but only stayed there for three weeks, which shows, you know, some weakness in the market, really. And then that drop, a little bit of an uptick once again in the middle of the summer, but that also did not last. And so what we have right now at the beginning of August for this item is Canadian $435 per thousand square feet, down from the end of July when it was $450, down from one month ago when it was $466, compared to the same week one year ago, it was $700, and compared to the same week two years ago, it was $520. And that also tells us something if you look at the yellow line from last year, 2023, quite a bit higher than the pink line from the previous year, 2022. And don't those two there seem to be coming close to each other this year compared to two years ago? And so that's what we do here. We look at the data in relation to each other and into the general marketplace. And that's what allows us to provide analysis about what is the lumber market doing and what does that mean for home builders and U.S. housing. Okay, and just real quick, uh, those two prices plotted against each other. This is a graph generated by my dashboard. Uh, my customers are able to pick up to five different commodity items and plot them against each other. So the two graphs that you were just looking at were week over week, two years. And this is the same two years showing you the time scale from August of 2022 to present. And so the, again, you can see the plywood and OSB not exactly moving in tandem, but a little bit of a correlation in the price trend, quite a bit of a gap there during 2022 in the price of the plywood, the yellow line at the top compared to the OSB, and then the OSB marched up, but then fell back down. And so the same graph you were just looking at, but now I've added the WSPF, the blue line at the top. Okay, and now just keep in mind that the dimension lumber prices are following the left axis, US dollars per thousand, per thousand board feet, and the panel prices are following the right axis, Canadian dollars per thousand square feet. So that's just a little bit of something to pay attention to. But as you can see here, there are some correlation between the peaks, but the rest of the actual trend between the dimension lumber and the panel does not necessarily correlate. And so that's something that we study to see in hindsight, can we find out, you know, was it remodeling? Was it reconstruction after storms? Was there a lot of infrastructure projects going on to explain what is the difference between those different price trend lines? Okay, and back to just the plywood and OSB. Now what I've done is I made a graph of the five years. Okay, so 2019, August, looking pretty normal as that was prior to the big changes and volatility, and then the peaks, and then going along to the past couple of years. So what we had there for the plywood the peak was in May of 2021 at $1,527 Canadian per thousand square feet. And the next peak was in February of 2022 at $1,381. Okay. And then for the OSB, the pink line, the peak was in again, May of 2021 
$2,008 per thousand square feet. <laughs> what did I say for this week? 435, right? And then the other peak, the second one, not as high in March of 2022, that OSB price was $1,521 Canadian per thousand square feet. And once again, adding the Dimension Lumber Western Spruce, once again on the left axis, as opposed to the plywood, which is on the right axis. And this graph, the five years, they, the price movement does seem to correlate. And so that's what we mean by taking a look at the history, having a look at some of the macroeconomic data. We take into account the forestry data like log harvest uh, and what is the log export, what is the lumber export, the lumber manufacturing volumes. This data comes out of different government departments and different agency associations like the Western Wood Products Association in Portland, Oregon. And all together with the lumber price data, we can get a look at what is going on in the industry and then try to provide some insight into what might happen coming up in the next quarter or perhaps to the end of the year. Okay, and so that's sort of the overview of currently where we are. And again, check back here often to find out as time goes by what my next update is going to be. If you like what you see here, click like so that this video will get recommended to other viewers. Uh, subscribe here so that you'll be notified when we make another update. And if you need to know more than just the small snapshot that I do for the um, website, or these YouTubes, then in this video is a link to fill out a form. You can get a sample and you see what are the 500 individual softwood lumber and panel commodity prices that we track and what is that current price. And we will also send you the commentary. This all goes into my dashboard that my customers sign into. That explains why the prices are changing. And if you, if you need that, if you find that useful, you can, we'll send you an invoice and you can have access to the full dashboard uh, and stay ahead of your competition.